Okay, this is going to be part two of my lots of limit examples video. So in the first part, we did one, two, and three. We also did a variation of three. So let's jump into number four here. This is one that I definitely have seen throw some people off. So this is the limit as h approaches zero of two plus h raised to the negative first power minus two raised to the negative first power over h. People don't like this negative exponent. It makes them a little nervous. So the first thing, let's just substitute in h, h equals zero. Well, if we put in h equals zero, we'll have two to the negative first power minus two to the negative first power over zero. Again, I'm just replacing h with zero, so it'll leave me with two to the negative uh, negative one power minus two to the negative one power over zero. Just to remind you, right, two to the negative one power, that's the same thing as one half. So we are getting zero over zero, and that tells me, hey, there's probably some stuff to do. All right, so let's rewrite this. Okay, so there's my h that was just hanging out in the bottom to begin with. Just like two to the negative first power, we just simply write that as one over two. Two plus h to the negative first power, that's just gonna be one over two plus h. And again, we just said two to the negative first power is one over two. This stuff doesn't all go to the denominator. That's not correct. Um, you know, I've seen people do something like this is two to the negative first plus h to the negative first, which again is also absolutely not correct. Um, so be careful about that. We're just using the same idea that if you have something to the negative first power, it's one over that stuff. That's it. Okay, well, in this case, I think, again, I'm getting zero over zero. If you look back over my little flow chart at the beginning, one of the things that was mentioned was maybe to get common denominators. So I've got this fraction in the numerator, this 2 plus h minus 1 half. I'm going to get common denominators in the numerator and clean that up. So I've got a 2 plus h and I've got a 2. Well, for the first term in the numerator, I could multiply by 2 over 2. And for the second one, I could multiply by 2 plus h over 2 plus h. And again, all I'm really doing is multiplying by 1 and by 1 on both of these. It's going to change the way it looks, but that's it. So, okay, so 2 times 1 is 2 minus... So I'm going to put little wings on my fraction there just to break it up visually for myself. There's our original h. Okay. Notice if I write this as a single fraction, we've got minus. Keep the 2 plus h in parentheses. Why? Because you're going to have to distribute the negative. If you don't do that, you're going to get a wrong answer. We've got our common denominator now of 2 multiplied by 2 plus h. So again, I'm just going to keep simplifying the numerator here. We've got the limit as h approaches 0. If I distribute this 2 minus 2 plus h, that's going to be 2 minus 2 minus h. Again, when I distribute the, the negative to the h. So the 2's are going to cancel. I'll be left with negative h divided by 2 times 2 plus h. So there's my original h that's sitting in the denominator. Just watching the party on top. I'm going to write h as h over 1. And the reason I'm going to write h as h over 1 is so that I can flip and multiply. Okay, so there's my negative h divided by 2 times 2 plus h. Okay, I was dividing by h over 1, so equivalently I'm going to multiply by 1 over h. Well, now I can cancel out the h's. I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0. I've got negative 1 on top. I've got 2 multiplied by 2 plus h. And now if I substitute in h equals 0, I'll have negative 1 on top. I'll have 2 multiplied by 2 plus 0. Well, that's going to leave me with negative 1 on top. 2 times 2 in the denominator is going to leave me with 4. So my solution here is going to be negative 1 fourth. Okay. So again, lots of little places to maybe get tripped up. But again, it's mainly, once you get to this part, it's just getting common denominators. Be careful about distributing the negative and canceling things out. Let's see here. Let's look at number five. The limit as x approaches zero. We've got x squared plus one over x multiplied by x minus 1. Now this one's going to have a little bit of a different flavor than the other problems. Notice if we substitute in x 
equals 0. On the top, we'll have 0 squared plus 1. In the denominator, we'll have 0, and then we'll have 0 minus 1. Well, okay, 0 squared is 0, plus 1 is 1. 0 multiplied by anything is, but is 0. So to me, there's probably a good chance that this is now going to be a problem where either the limit's positive infinity, negative infinity, or it's not going to exist. So recall for a limit to exist, the limit as x approaches that number from the left and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right has to equal the same thing. Okay. So there's really no algebra to do. Be careful, the numerator doesn't factor. If it was x squared minus 1, you could factor it. x squared plus 1 doesn't factor using real numbers. So there's really not a lot to do. A lot of times in notation, people will use, and I've got some other examples of these for, uh, for sure, um, dealing with infinite limits. So if you search, you know, Patrick JMT, infinite limits, you'll see some of the other of these types. When I do these, I just substitute in, again, x equals 0. So in the numerator, we saw if we substitute in x equals 0, we just get 1. Now notice for the first term, if we substitute in x equals 0, we get 0, and that's the place I'm going to have to be a little more careful. So I'm going to come back to that one in just a second. I'm going to be a little more careful. The second term, I have x minus 1. Well, again, if I substitute in 0, I'll be left with negative 1. So this is where I have to think. And this is a, you know, a common notation people actually use, for sure. So x is approaching 0 from the left. That means we're taking numbers a little bit smaller than 0. Well, there's not really any arithmetic to do, because if I substitute in a number a, number a little bit smaller than 0, well, x is going to be a little bit smaller than 0. So the way that we denote that is we put a little minus sign up here. Okay? So this says, for this factor, we're going to get numbers close to 0, but a little bit smaller than 0, which means, hey, they're negative. Hey, they're negative. The top is still 1. So think about it this way now. We're still just, really all you're trying to do is figure out a sign. 0 multiplied by anything is 0. But it says, okay, this number was close to 0 and negative. You're multiplying that by negative 1. So really, when you simplify the denominator, it's going to be a number close to 0. But now it's going to be positive, because you've got a negative times a negative. If you take 1 and divide it by a number that's close to 0 but's po but is positive, you know, think about 1 divided by 0 0.000001. Okay, this is actually going to be, well, let's see, what's 1 over 0.1? That's 10. So here we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. So 1 divided by that is actually, you're already at a million. If this number gets even smaller in the denominator, the number you get out is going to get larger and larger and larger. So if we take 1 and divide it by a number that's really close to 0, but it's positive, this is going to go off to positive infinity. Okay, so now we have to do the same thing for the right-hand limit. It's going to be almost the exact same argument. And I think we definitely have some more examples of these somewhere. Yeah, number 8 is going to be another one. We won't get there immediately, but if you want to see another one like this, jump to number 8. So again, if we do 0 from the right, I'm going to get 1 on top. I get 0 here if I substitute in 0. So again, that's where I'm going to be careful. Well, again, now if I take a number a little bit bigger than 0 and I substitute it in for x, well, it's going to be a number a little bit bigger than 0. The same thing as before for the second factor. 0 minus 1, that's still negative 1. Well, now 0 times anything is 0. But now I've got a number that's a little bit bigger than 0, but it's positive, multiplied by negative 1. That means it's going to be really close to 0, but it's going to be a little bit smaller than 0. It's going to be negative. So I've got a positive over a negative. Think about that as being, well, negative. 1 over 0, that is being your uh, infinity. So. It says the left-hand limit goes to positive infinity. The right-hand limit goes to negative infinity. So that means the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 1 over x multiplied by x minus 1. Here you would say that does not exist.
Okay, it does not exist. So, hopefully you've seen these types of limits before, but that's, that's the argument that you're going through. So again, I know these also confuse people, so definitely feel free to spend a little time with that one. Let's do, uh, let's do two more in this video because I'm having fun. So number six was the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of x minus x. Well, again, here, if, if x approaches infinity, well, if you take the square root of numbers that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the outputs you get out are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So as x approaches infinity, the square root of x is just going to go to infinity. There's my minus. And certainly as x goes to infinity, well, x is going to infinity. This is, again, an indeterminate form. It says for really large numbers, you're going to get a big number minus a big number. Well, what happens if you get a big number minus a big number? You can't treat infinity like a number. It is not a number. It's a concept. It's an idea. It says things are getting big. Okay, So even though right, it's a symbol, it's not a number. So don't treat it like a number. A big number minus a big number, it could be anything. It could still be a big number. It could be a finite number, it could be a negative number, it could be zero, it could be negative infinity. This is the point. This is why we call this indeterminate. Just knowing that it's a big number minus a big number, there's not enough information there to, to decide what's going on. Well, it's like, what do I do here? There's not a lot to do. Well, kind of the argument that you can make here that makes things clearer. Square root of x minus x, I can factor out the square root of x. Well, I think square root of x multiplied by what is square root of x? I'm going to need a positive 1. The square root of x multiplied by what is x? Well, you're going to need another square root of x, right? We saw an example earlier. I think it was number 3. Root x multiplied by root x is going to give you x. So if I distribute this out, you know, I get this original expression back. And now let's think about what happens. As x goes to infinity, we just said the square root of x, that goes to infinity. Well, then we would have 1 minus infinity. Okay, square root of x goes to infinity, square root of x goes to infinity. Okay, so the first number is getting big, then we're going to have 1 minus a big number. 1 minus a big number is going to be, well, a negative big number. If that's a good way to say it. 1 minus infinity is going to be negative infinity. Well, now I've got a number that's a positive times a negative. That's going to be a negative. They're both large when you think about the absolute value of them. So this is big positive. This is big but negative. So positive infinity multiplied by negative infinity is going to be negative infinity. And that's going to be your solution. And maybe that seems plausible, right? As x gets big, the square root of that number, you know, the square root is going to make it smaller. But then we're still subtracting its original big value. So this number certainly seems bigger than this one, which makes me think, hey, maybe negative infinity is, in fact, a reasonable solution. Let's look at one more. Let's look at number 7. We've got the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 3x to the fifth plus 4x plus 11. Okay, so here we're doing a limit at infinity. We've just got a polynomial expression. When you have a polynomial that you're taking the limit of, all you look at is you look at the, the highest, the term involving the highest power, the biggest degree. So here the, the, the degree is 5. So all I'm really interested in is this negative 3x to the fifth. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of this polynomial is going to be the exact same as the limit approaches negative infinity of negative 3x to the fifth. And you can think about this two ways. You can think about the graph of negative 3x to the fifth, or you can go through the same argument that we did back here. Okay, so negative 3, well, that's negative 3. I'm going to take, so x is approaching negative infinity. So the idea is if I take a number that's negative, that's approaching negative infinity, and I raise it to the fifth power. Well, if I take a negative number and raise it to the fifth power, it's still going to be negative. If I were just to take a big number and raise it to the fifth power, it's going to be even bigger. So negative infinity to the fifth, that's still the same thing as negative infinity. I've got a negative multiplied by a negative. That's going to be a positive. So I've got 3 multiplied by infinity. 
Well, if you take 3 and multiply it by a really big number, it's still a really big number. So it says this is going to go off to infinity. And if you recall, x to the fifth looks something like that. But if I multiply that by a negative, it's going to flip it about the x-axis. The 3 is actually going to make it steeper. So there's negative 3. There's the function negative 3x to the fifth. It's the one here in red or the one that I'm sort of scribbling over. So again, it says as you approach negative infinity, as we go to the left, 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 left on the graph, it says the y values are getting bigger, 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 bigger. They're approaching positive infinity. And that's what this computation uh, shows us. So, all right, a few more limit problems. I guess in the next video we'll do a few more, and we'll just keep going from there.